to another great question, which is how to love with non-attachment. This question is difficult because first we have to understand what it means to love, something which fundamentally true love cannot be I cannot fully be defined or is no longer true. That which is true cannot be defined, cannot be truly understood. It can be experienced or realized. It cannot fully be understood. The small love can be understood to some degree, but unconditioned love or unconditional love cannot fully be understood. So that's that's a challenge there. And then we have another word in here, non-attachment. Another way of just saying that would be detachment. And so we need to understand what is attachment. So let's start with love first. First we have personal love, which may or may not include the self, depending on how psychologically damaged we, we have been, or we are, the brain is. But let's just say that there's a reasonable degree of self-love, for without a reasonable degree of self-love, we cannot love others. We will cling to them desperately. That's not love, it's not healthy. So we can say that at least love as a basic definition should be something which is healthy, which strengthens the spirit. It does not create a sense of desperation, but instead, instead fulfills the spirit and allows the, the individuals involved to be ever more capable in the world. So that will say that that is at least a fundamental definition of love. A baby is born into the world, and the first love that it experiences is physical, in that it, it is nourished by the milk and is physically held, and the, the mother has affection for it, so it's a sharing of affection. So we can say that affection is at the level of personal love. But affection no longer becomes helpful at a certain point. It has to be very, it's very carefully, has to be very carefully expressed. Because affection is an energy that will feed and support any behavior or any thinking pattern, which is to say it will fuel an angel or a demon. An inner angel, inner demon, a terrible idea as well as a good idea. If your child is misbehaving and you give the child affection during the misbehavior, you have actually created an association between misbehavior and a reward. So affection cannot be connected to unconditioned love. Although unconditioned love may express through affection, it is not equal to affection. There may be affection that accompanies unconditioned love would be a good way of saying it. They're not equal. They're not the same thing. One could be in a state of unconditioned love and be quite stern. Unconditioned love gives what is needed, not what is wanted. It fuels what is healthy to be fueled and remo removes fuel from that which is unhealthy. It feeds the plants and starves the weeds, would be a way of saying it. Affection feeds the weeds and the plants. So personal love is where most people are. We love this person because we know them and they, our sense of identity is attached to them. So our sense of love is, a, is dependent upon how we are identified. Unconditioned love loves regardless of identification. It loves these people and those people. We, cannot, we should not confuse that with empathy. 
or sympathy. So it's become a big movement these days to empathize or sympathize with people of who are victimized classes or of other nations and that sort of thing. But sympathizing doesn't help. Pity does not help. That is another form of disharmony. It is a kind of a kind of con uh, condescension. A kind of condescension as if we are above them. It doesn't help, and it creates the story that there is the victim and then there's the victimizer. So then now we must attack the victimizer. So empathy can become quite aggressive and defensive very rapidly. Empathy or sympathy. Now, the true definition of empathy is to understand another person's position, not to identify with it. However, in actual fact, most people identify with the other and then their sense of understanding comes from identifying with them, which creates an emotional tie an essential kind of pity or even agreement. And true empathy is to understand the individual's position, but not to become them, not to identify with them. Anytime we identify ourselves with anything, one is then attached to it and has to defend it, support it, pity it. There's a kind of taint involved in the process. So we remove the identification. Then we see directly and honestly to understand where they're coming from, recognizing that we cannot, that this mind can't jump into their situation with our memories and understand their situation, not truly. Not truly. We cannot experience their experience. It's a projection. We should not be confused about that fact that, that sympathy is a projection. False empathy is a projection or an imagination process based on our own experience and suffering. It doesn't truly mean we understand their situation. So that's, that's important to get. So Let's move on to attachment, non-attachment. So it's a common spiritual philosophy or common teaching of various gurus and teachers um, that directs our attention towards detachment. That the right mind is a detached mind. We cannot know exactly what they mean. Maybe it's just uh, the best word that they could come up with, but it's not accurate. And most people will hear it and misunderstand it as meaning aloofness. Watch a person who's de extremely depressed and you'll see a person who's detached. They're emotionally detached from life and totally self-absorbed in their suffering. The narrative is what's the point. There's a kind of disassociation that occurs with detachment. What I would say is that uh, a kind of apathy that can occur, uh, a narrative of life is meaningless, a kind of nihilism that can occur. And it may just it may just be not quite the right word. A lot of these things, true, true teachings, there aren't truly any right words. There's nothing in the human mind that can understand them. And so we're just picking words that are as close as we can find. And a lot of these words were things that were said in a different language and then translated into English by someone who may not understand. And so we get words like detachment. The true or healthy way to live life is like swimming. One's body slides through the water. It doesn't try to hold on to the water. It is completely engaged, yet letting it pass. That is to be present. That is to be balanced in this, in that yin yang symbol. It cannot be called detachment. Water is, you, you have to engage the water or you don't swim, you drown. If you have enough body fat, you might float. 
In my case, I have no body fat. I'm just bone and sinew. If I sit in the water and I don't embrace it and move through it, I sink and drown. But life is like that. Unless we have a monastery that will feed us, if we're not engaged in life, we will sink and drown. So a monastery is an artif artificial environment that allows for certain inaccuracies to be in the teachings. We can detach and not actually suffer too much because we're going to be fed anyway. The state supports the monastery, the, the population supports the monastery, but we are awakening in daily life, so that requires greater accuracy. We're not retreating from life, we're fully embracing it in the moment. Yet we're not getting stuck to it either. We're moving and flowing through the moment. That is the right way. That is the way that will lead towards greater and greater spiritual awakening, yet greater and greater healthy expression in life. It's authentic. It's not contrived. It's not apathetic. It's not detached. It's not aloof. It's, it's embracing, yet not sticking to. It's not holding on to or caging that which it embraces. It's like a good hug. We let go. We express the affection and let go. That's the best way to love. It's the best way to be. Love fully. Let your smile shine. Embrace life. There's nothing wrong with living. This is right. This is now. Be here now. Love this. And if there's something in life that we can ch change, you are also a force of life, just as is the avalanche, just as the waterfall, just as everything else. You can be a part of the change. You can guide the change. That's okay too. You can embrace that. We're not talking about accepting everything that is negative that occurs without any flow or um, adjustments. Adjustment is also part of swimming. We can change course during the swim. There's nothing wrong with that. This is just as much, this is just as much a part of life as, as the external world. In truth, there is no difference. There's an interplay between the two. Oftentimes in the spiritual awakening path of those who are spiritually inclined, we, we almost separate our body and our sense of uh, awareness from the rest of reality. And we just have to, it's like we just have to accept whatever comes. Un, un, untouched, unmodified. That's not true at all. This is part of what comes. And this is designed to make adjustments. There's a reason why these joints can move. We can use these fingers. They're meant to adjust the environment. That's not wrong. Do it, do it with flow, do it with embrace. Embrace this moment. Be a part of the flow, be a part of the correction of life as well. I hope this helps. Have a warm day. Blessings, bye-bye.